Hello Grinders Cool Colossals and um, this time I am playing 25 and all my previous videos have been a lot at 10 and all so I decide today to make a video on 25 and all and a couple of things already happened at the table before I could press the record button we might uh, go over them in a minute after the action clears up. On table number three, I have just three better blind versus blind versus a 15 15 guy. Flop comes, not the best flop. Uh, I have to bet here because I'm getting still value from hands like jacks, queens, uh, stuff like that. If he raises me, I'm probably getting it in. Uh, since he didn't raise my c bet here, I am removing all sets from his range. I'm re I'm really putting him on like something like pocket jacks, pocket tens. So it's time to get some value. Um, bet like six twenty, yeah, six twenty five, and I'm not folding to a shove either. He shoves. Uh, it's possible that he has a 7, but he has nothing. Well, he had an open ender. And the way I say, I say it's possible that he has a 7, but it's just a small percentage of his range there, since he did call my 3-bet out of position. Blind versus blind. Um... He has a lot more like pocket tens, pocket jacks, pocket queens, pocket kings in his range. Like mm, some draws, but not a lot. I actually am quite surprised. Sixes is actually one of the stronger hands because he does have an open ender versus me. So I do consider it one of the not so nice hands uh, to be up against when he ships on uh, the turn. But anyway, I'm. Um, Closing down my other tables on a different screen so I can focus uh, solely on this one's so ace king on table number two. Uh, the guy is 60 30 after 10 hands, so I'm definitely gonna raise this for uh, three bet this for value. Uh, he insta folded. Deuce for suited table number three. You might see me play a little bit more hands than at 10 and out just because. I do think that at 25 and all you have to force the action a little bit more than at 10 and all. At 10 and all you have hundreds, thousands of bad people playing. 25 and all this uh, number goes down. So if you want to make a decent living, you have to be a little bit more aggressive. You have to force the action a little bit more. The 7 8 offsuits here, actually, on table number 2 was a bad race um, from the small blinds. I do expect to get 3 bad a lot from the big blinds. So it's an easy fold anyway. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the hands that uh, have been. Uh, going on in this very short intro that I had before pressing the record button, but we're getting really smashed by the deck, so I'm gonna play the pocket queens here. Uh, there's one big disadvantage on table number three, and that's that there's a big stack on my uh, on my left, and when you are not comfortable playing 200 big blinds deep, you're definitely not going to be comfortable playing 200 big blinds deep versus a guy who is on your left. When you when you do play deeper, you really want to have position because the bigger the stack you have, the more position matters. That's why in uh, sit and goes uh, where people usually play with like 20 through 30 big blinds, it's position matters much less just because there's much less play involved uh, post flop. But anyway, I think one of the more interesting hands happened on. this table. Okay, let's review 
with his hand. Here, 7 5 suits it. I can actually 3 bet this one. Uh, it doesn't seem to be folding to 3 bets um, all that often, but I'm gonna do it once. See how they react. Although the table seems to be breaking up. Uh, queen 7 is standard c bet here. On a very dry flop, and we get a fold. Unfortunately, on table number 4, our 3 bet gets called in both spots. The flop comes king high. Um, I doubt that they both will fall to a C bet. It's, you can C bet here. It's not bad. I do have some back doors, which helps. Um, I doubt that anybody has Ace King uh, here, because Ace King, I believe, would be three betting there uh, a lot of the time. So I'm going to make the C bet. Unfortunately, we uh, do get called by the button. Uh, it's this is a. A card I can double barrel, and seriously, how many? I will double barrel it because uh, how many kings can continue when I uh, bet here again? Uh, not a lot, so I am going to uh, bet um, this turn again, and I'm gonna fall out the hands like king ten, king jack, because real seriously, I am not betting. Uh, those hands anymore. When he does call me, I'm really surprised. Uh, I'm just chipping it in, obviously. Um, if when we hit the flush, uh, if he hit a, if he hit a full house, uh, well, so be it. That's life. I'm just chipping it in. Uh, I'm just wondering if checking is better. I don't think so. When he calls flop, calls uh, he have to call uh, this river shove. And he shows up with pocket checks. Unbelievable, these guys. <laughs> I mean, luckily I didn't bluff the, all the way through when I missed my flush because I would be really pissed off if he would have called me down there with uh, pocket checks and he would have. Uh, I don't know why I didn't see that here, the 8 queen. I de this is definitely C bet uh, with the gut shot, but now I just have to fold it. Wow, so a lot of stuff going on uh, in the beginning of this video. Let's see if we can. Uh, let's first go over this hand. I will try to keep the action to a minimum. If I don't get king queen all the time and ace king and queens. Uh, with the ace king free flop it's pretty standard some guy raises from uh, the cutoff and I three bet him for value his queen I didn't have any reads on the guy but his queen suited is practically versus they have to be really needy not to be uh, three betting there for value uh, he calls me and I hit uh, the nuts uh, my plan is here essentially to bet 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 I do bet. I only bet three dollars because I don't don't have to bet much. I'm not afraid of any cards. So I bet he calls the turn is a blank. The hand plays itself. I bet, and then I'm, when I'm putting him here on a range, I'm putting him on like any pocket pair. He never has a set because a set would raise the flop, um, being this scary of a flop. So he has something like pocket nines. Sometimes he floats with two over cards, but I don't see many over cards falling since I'm uh, floating there since I'm holding one ace and one queen already. So I'm putting him on something like tens jacks, and I'm pretty happy betting this small and, uh, and going to the river. Unfortunately, on the river, the board adds another spade and as such I can't really because if I shove here he only calls me with oh, I don't think if I shove here he even folds pocket uh, tens even if he has a tens of spades 
and they're still $13 behind. Uh, I don't think a guy is going to put that amount of money in there. Well, at least I don't think uh, that they might. As I see some people doing some crazy stuff here. So I'm putting still on something like pocket tens, pocket jacks. If he has pocket jacks with the spades of jacks, he's probably just gonna check if I check it to him because he has showdown value and he never gets called by he never gets gets called by anything worse. Uh, if I shove here, I'm also folding out a lot of hands, I believe, which will call if I only bet small. So I bet small hoping to induce something by let's say pocket tens turning his hand into a, a, a bluff. I'm trying to look weak here. Uh, with the eight of diamonds here I hit the flush. Yeah I know it's not the best flush so I have showdown value. I'm just gonna check it behind and hopefully he lets me go to showdown here. Now then another diamond comes off. Uh, depending on his bet sizing, I will uh, call. Uh, if he makes it three dollars, I will fold. If he makes it like one dollar, I will call, just because of the odds that I'm getting. I just hope my connection. Uh, yeah, there we go. He checks. I believe I have the best hand. Uh, I'm gonna make like a small bet. Uh, hoping that he thinks that he's splitting the pot. Uh, if he raises me, it's an easy fold. But right now, I just can't help myself of not getting like a little bit of value uh, out of from him. Here, I don't raise on table number one with the king jack because if I do raise, what is a 10 5 going to do? Uh, the fact that he bets so small believes makes me think that he's drawing. So I'm still just calling down. Ah, yes. Well, I, I'm, I'd rather put him on a hand like ten jack something. Um, I could have raised the turn. Uh, now, if I bet, obviously there's no value in betting. I'm just checking down and going to. And he exactly has jack ten. Um, so why don't I raise the turn then? Because I'm too busy talking and. Playing way too many hands because I'm really getting slapped by the deck right now. So anyway, with the ace king hand that I was showing, I decided to make a small bet on the river when the fourth spades get there hoping to either still get calls by a pair of tens or a pair of jacks with the jacks of space or the ten of space or by inducing a bluff from somebody with pocket tens but doesn't have a spade and my bet looks weak uh, uh, he did make the call uh, on the river there with pocket t uh, jacks uh, without a spade if you rewind this video you can see it when I bring up the hand, I'm really getting nice cards. And again. Okay. So here on the river, he did call me, which is nice. Uh, with 9 7, with, yeah, I mean, he. He was hoping for the split, but I, I got some nice value out of him. Uh, and believe me, when people check raise you there on the river, you can easily fold after you make the bet. You try to, um, you try to get some value out of him, which you should. He looks bad, uh, half only half a stack. I am going to float uh, here once. I doubt that he's not bluffing all that much because I raised another gun and he three best for me from the big blind to have the cut. I have to float him once here uh, and see what he does. He can still have ace king the same hand as me, and it's just uh, betting here. And I can, if he has ace king, I can easily take it away from him uh, on the on the turn. 
if he bets again, we will just fold. Also, I had the backdoor uh, diamonds, which obviously helps. Without the backdoor diamond, I possibly it's closer to a fold. So you might see me raising a little bit looser than my normal play at 10 and all. This is because at 10 and all it's completely unnecessary. I made a lot of videos by now at 10 and all, and if you really, uh, and uh, I guarantee you, if you follow my advice, you will be beating 10 and all for a really decent uh, win rate. Uh, I will barrel uh, the ace of diamonds, uh, the queen of diamonds here. Uh, I believe this guy is capable of flowing me with like all kinds of crap. So, and I have like ace high, so if he folds a pair of sixes there, I'm uh, pretty happy. And even if he doesn't fold, I have so much equity in that pot. Uh, I'm, I'm even doubting if he shoves whether I should fold. So I have to check his bet sizing. I have to pause the video because my connection, oh no, we're back. My connection seems a little bit iffy. Uh, we get raised, unfortunately, on table number two, and we do get to fall on table number four, so that's really nice. On table number two, it's an easy fold. We see that the king high flop, uh, he raises a king nine four flop. He's not representing all that much, um, but all right, there's really nothing I can do. He's representing like, he never raises a king in my opinion, uh, he's representing like pocket nines or a flush draw, maybe pocket fours. Okay, so on table number one, this is a hand I check back often. Uh, it is versus, oh it's versus the same guy, I'm gonna take him green. First is the same guy. I'm gonna check it back, play my hand a little bit deceptfully. First is a guy who has, yeah, I mean, he probably doesn't know all too often what he's doing. And hopefully, I'm just I'm checking back to induce this kind of stuff. Uh, hopefully, he's just doing this with like, I mean, like Queen Jack. On table number two, the guy is kind of already irritating me, uh, tree betting me again. I'm gonna, uh, yeah, tree bet, tree bet quite a bit. Uh, once he checks, I'm trying to go for a little bit again. The same thing. Uh, if I take a check raise, it's an easy. i just have to bet here because I've, if he has a pair of nines, I'm still gonna get calls. Uh, maybe by checking back the flop he doesn't believe I have an ace and is calling me with like king high, who knows. Um, I just have to make a value bet here versus that type of guy. And again, he calls me and I have the best hand. So let's see if checking back the flop was indeed the best play. Uh, he shows up with queen 9 so if I bet the flop I don't think he folds uh, versus a flop bet. Jack six. I'm gonna raise. I'm raising on table number four mainly because the bad guy is in my big blind and the other guys, yeah, are so are tied and. Um. So if I put the flop. Since he has queen nine, I probably do get two streets of value if I bet the flop. Maybe he folds to a turn bet if I bet the flop, but then I, if I bet the flop and he calls, I would probably check back the turn and bet the river again if he checks to me. So it's, the result is, was probably going to be the same, but keep in mind that his range is a lot wider than, than a pair of nines here. Uh, the way I played it, I kept his range much wider. Uh, nine, ten suit. Um, Although I raised jack six suited on table number four because this guy was in the blinds, I will fold nine ten suited uh, from 
the hijack just because he's now on the button and that makes my life a lot more difficult. Position, position, position. I said it many, 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 many times in a lot of videos. And this also goes a lot for the tree bedding. In my case, I do uh, tree bed in position as a bluff, but I hardly ever tree bed out of position as a bluff. Um, again, we get tree beds, but that's okay. By a guy who doesn't tree bed like two times uh, in 55 occasions, he tree beds. So, tree king, I'm just gonna make the fold. As you can see, there's some some decent people at these tables. Well, at least I have decent-looking stacks. I have no. Oh, I still have to talk about the um, uh, jack jack hand. Where? Okay. Uh, where to start? Okay, I make a three bet. He raises from the but I make a squeeze. I mean, yeah, I just mentioned that I don't three bet as a bluff out of position, but this seemed like a good idea to do it there because uh, he it was three handed, well, four handed. He raised from the button, Hurley's luck uh, in the small blind just called. Um, so I make a three bet there. We do not hit. We get called in both spots. The flop comes, king six deuce, really dry. So I believe that if somebody has ace king, he is for betting me pre flop. If somebody has jacks or queens, he's gonna fold to my c bet because there's an overcard to the board. Um, if somebody has pocket sixes, he'll probably just call down because the board is so dry. But pocket sixes, I kind of discount from their range. Oh, this is, a, oh, I'm just gonna call it. So I see that here. Unfortunately, we do get called by the guy um, on the button. Uh, check or bet. The only, the only card I don't want to see here on table number three is a king, but I mean, I'm really, I'm just gonna check it and go to showdown. I will bet the river if he checks back and an innocent card comes off. But I can also see a guy lead dragon like checking back. He never has the flush. He would have bet the flush by now, the flush draw. Uh, so I'm just gonna bet like 50 cents and hopefully get called by like pocket nice. Uh, King Ten Sulets folds to three bets all the time. Um, yeah, I'm just sad. I don't three bet as a bluff out of position. And I see, uh, yet I do seem to be doing it. Is six uh, is six offsuit on table number three? Um, blah, 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 blah. big blind to steal six. Okay, let's just do. Keep an aggressive image kind of up. Keep my stats a little bit on the higher end, so that I, when I do get uh, a good hand, I, I get some action. Uh, really bad flop on table number one. Bad in the sense that although I've hit a pair, I'm never gonna get faults, and you really don't want to get raised on this flop, and it's gonna happen uh, quite a bit. And there's really nothing I can do. I'm just gonna check. I'm not falling to a bet. Since he checked back, he never has a jack. So, unless he has a better 10, I have the best hand. So, it's time to start betting. Now, my hand is pretty face up. If he is any of a better player, I probably knows I have nothing really strong like pocket jacks or pocket aces. Uh, because I would have been betting the flop. So, if he's any good, he would be raising right now. But he's not good because he's halfly stacked, playing 14 8 playing kind of fiddle fold so my play is fine there 7 8 2 that's mm -hmm. in position versus a knit so if we do hit we, the chances that we 
do get paid off or a little bit bigger. So I'm calling there with seven eight suited. I uh, could have made a three bet. Yeah, I could have probably three bet. But the guy is nitty, raised for, just raised from another gun. I believe I can easily outplay him post flop in position. So you don't always have to three bet these suited to suited type of connectors. So he checks. He never has like aces, kings, queens. I mean, this is not a guy to. He's not a guy who will slow play. So I can easily take it down with eight high by betting. And we do. Easy game. Nice uh, game. Okay, attack style. I want to keep the donkey in the hand also. But I'm just gonna 3 bet it. He's on both of my tables, by the way. Uh, I just noticed this now. He folded on table number 4 and he folds on table number 1. Ace 8, really loose open on table number 3. But um, going along with my image of opening quite a few hands. Also the table is really needy. Nobody behind me is maybe the guy on the button three bets. No, he never three bets. I bet I can open even nine ten offset here and take it down pre flop. Three bets? No, never three bets. And no none of these guys ever three bets, so I'm gonna open a nine ten suited. Uh nine ten offsuit also. Ace four I'm gonna open because textile probably doesn't three bet. No. Only three percent. King high flop. Um, we have ace high. Uh, if we check, I can never check call. Um, so we're gonna make a bet. I'm gonna make it 115. If I make like a uh, one dollar bet, it seems kind of small on the smaller side, and it might float me. And I don't. Want, I just want him to fold his pocket sevens, and he does. King seven suited. Same story. Everybody behind me is so tight. Uh, and in the big blind there's probably a weaker guy because he's only halfly stacked. So it's a race. Oh, I didn't want to make it 4x on table number 1, I don't know what happened, the button kind of jammed. Hmm. Interesting that who, he raised from under gun and then he checks this. I'm just gonna check this back because this guy is a supernova something. I'm just gonna check this back and uh, see the turn. He, since he checks back he doesn't have anything. Here I'm just gonna oh, continue. Oh that's a small continuation bet. He's supernova playing short stack 25 and I'll probably playing like a gazillion of tables. Although he seems kinda bad playing 2012 loose passive. Only he's not also not playing short stack, he's playing with 40 big blinds. So I don't know what the supernova is thinking. 10 7 suited I will defend versus a small blind steal. And ace jack, I could definitely float because his one dollar bet is on the small side. Actually I'm gonna float him. The queen isn't the best card because this is a card he will barrel and it definitely hits his range. And he does barrel. And now look at his bet sizing, it's much bigger than his bet on the flop. So I believe he actually hit the queen. Um, if he had something like pocket aces, he would have bet like one dollar twenty five on the flop. It's really I mean, with experience, you really learn how, how what these guys' hands are based on their bet sizing. Uh, since this got checked, uh, when people check twice to you, uh, out of position, you can you, you basically have to bet it because they're folding everything. Uh, standard C bet, I'm guessing on. And it's not the best. It's complete. It's a, actually it's a crappy flop on table number two because I mean I don't have any back doors, I have two of cards. Um, but I have to uh, make a c-bet there. Hopefully fold again his pocket sixes and stuff like this. 
we get raised, which will happen quite a bit. He can risk quite a bit in here. There's three draws. There's like sets out there. So there's flush draws with over cards. Uh, so I have to give respect to his raise here. And he actually never raises on the flop. Zero, zero percent. So. Pocket queens, yippee whoa, on both. Pocket queens everywhere. Pocket queens versus the lesser skilled guy on table number one. Easy race. And, oh, wow, we hit a set. Uh, table, break flop, three bets, hit three bets, false three bets. If I, uh, if I make a three bet there, I'm going to bet one. I think this guy, I mean, either he calls or he falls, so 150 or 125, it's not gonna matter. Here I'm just gonna call with pocket queens. I'm gonna play it a little bit more deceptively. Uh, he called, I have to, if I bet 350, I can, blah, I have to make some quick calculations. Yeah, I can shove the river. Even if uh, even if a heart comes on the river, I'm still shoving. By the way, and let's take the rest of his money by betting. Well, the, actually, the, the question is, what can he have? But if he has the aces, if he did have the did he hit the ace on the river with like the flush draw with the ace, he's not falling, but he might be checking back. So I'm just gonna bet here, and hopefully he calls me with like. Ace Jack of Hearts. Oh, unfortunately, he did fall. Oh shit! On table number, he didn't make the fault. That's unfortunate. On table number one. So I'm guessing he was on some kind of flush draw, and but without the Ace of Hearts. I don't know if he's aggressive enough to. Um, what the hell happened on table number two? He made like a 25 cent bet. It's weird. And now he makes a 50 cent bet. I'm, I'm not falling, obviously. A raising is not going to do any too good because, I mean, what's going to call me anything worse? So, let's just... I, I hate just showing down my hands. That's the problem. Okay, well, maybe he has some kind of weak king but I'm not falling for that price and he actually wow luckily luckily within three bad pre-flop because I was going to get it in probably uh, okay so normally if the if like the queen on table number one if the queen of diamonds came off I probably make a double barrel but with the king of diamonds I don't see any point in battle because he's not falling anything that he he doesn't he's never gonna believe I have a king right now when another king comes off and I do have some equity I don't also don't want to get raised right now so I'm just gonna check and uh, let my hand go to showdown we have a lot of equity with a nine and a diamond coming off uh, this is interesting with the ten uh, I'm just gonna check it had this yeah. Ace Jack calls a C bet there. He does probably he does probably fault if I make a double barrel. Uh, interesting to see. Yeah, he's not the smartest guy. Okay, calls a C bet. Ace Jack on King Ten. Just this kind of indicates to me that he's kind of. Especially out of position, I'm gonna make that now because in position it's not that bad to do it, but out of position I really don't like his float with the gut shot. And on table number four, I have to readjust my read that the guy on the big blind is he's half stacked, but he's playing six deuce, so he's playing like the complete other net, so he's not the probably not that bad as it's probably bad but not loose aggressive bad textile we have three bad him let's see if he adjusts yeah let's see if he adjusts 
Okay, I'm not. Uh, I'm not uh, with Queen Jack. I'm not gonna play a pot against the guy who's playing six twos with like Queen High. It's it's really possible that during this video I missed out on a few hands which uh, I didn't comment on, but I have to say there's a lot of action uh, with the pocket queens here. Let's make a three bet here. We are, you know, we are 100. 40, 50, no, 30 big blinds deep, something like this. Uh, if he re raises me, mm, he's on both my tables. What the? Wait a minute. I was looking at the wrong stats, wasn't I? No, I was not. He's 18, 16, but I kind of read him differently because. He falls to 3 bets 50% of the time. Um, yeah, I mean, with kings, and I'm probably getting it in pre flop. Although, okay. If I 3 bet his under the gun range, and we are deep, and he 4 bets me, chances that he has something like jacks or queens go down, chances that he has something like ace king. And aces and kings go up. And I'm still getting it in. Uh, 100. What is it? 150 big blinds? No, 140 big blinds. In. I'm obviously still getting it in. Um, here I'm just c betting versus tag style on a really dry flop. Standard c bets. You're gonna get a lot of folds on these flops. He doesn't fold, and why doesn't he fold? Either it could have something like pocket nines. If if um, uh, if the turn was a jack, I would have check called probably. Uh, if the turn was a king, I would have barreled again. If uh, the turn was an ace, I would have barreled. If the turn was a spade, I would have barreled. Now with the eight of hearts, it's not really one of my barreling cards because pocket nines is probably I might actually fall, seeing that he's quite nitty. But I'm just gonna check here. And, uh, I've three betted him a couple of times. He might be a little bit pissed off and just calls. I'm calling here for set mining on table number uh, three, by the way. And a little bit because it has post flop value. He instantly bets on an ace high flop and he doesn't make it small. He makes it quite big, so uh, I think a smaller bet is like 250. He makes it 320. Um, and he never 3 bets, so I'm gonna give him some respect. Here. Look at aces. Oh, but nobody comes in. So, but we play against quite an aggressive guy. Who three bets? Well, one time. Let's see if he three bets my steal. Nope. Queen ten suited. Well, it's good enough for a race. Uh, okay, ace high flop, queen pair of queens. So, what can we do? What can we do? Uh, ten jack, uh, offsuit. It's heads up, I am going to call, and I will continue to play heads up versus this guy. Uh, King deuce 8 flop. He's gonna see bet this with his entire range. I might actually check raise him if he see bets here. Uh, here on table number uh, 1, I'm just gonna bet. You got 75 cents. Uh, but uh, we can uh, check raise him, don't we? I mean, there's not a lot of hands he can continue with when I check raise him. It doesn't need to be big either. Ah, he did call.
call me on table number two. I see that I don't know if C banning was the best option either. Um, flop, fall to continuation bet, 60%. Doesn't fall. Because you're gonna check it now. I would also check if I have an ace, by the way. If I have ace jack, I would be checking. So I don't know if he's really gonna bet it. Seeing that my range also contains a lot of aces. He does make the bet. Six, seven, off, so no, I'm not gonna play. I have to fall on table number two. And nine, five, um, it sets up. I'm gonna min race again. He followed to the previous min race, so okay, now I need three bets. Four, five, seven, flop. Uh, I'm gonna bet, and I'm gonna barrel quite a few cards. Any, pretty much any over card, by the way. Like any ten, jack, queen, ace, king, nine. Well, we do pick up equity here. Um, we still have a ten, a jack, or an eight to complete our draw. So we're gonna uh, put on the aggression. Don't have to bet big. If he has air, something like ace, axe, is uh, just gonna fold. Just gonna make it a little bit like 135 because it seems. I mean, I don't know if it makes any difference, but. Ah, oh, wow. And he does race, so this kinda sucks. 4, 5, 7, 9. Okay. Gut shots and the flash draw. So we're gonna do exactly the same as uh, with my air. If he raises me here, I'm probably getting it in, depending on his bet sizing. Dink, of bink, whatever you, you guys say. We hit the best card because now our hand is really like hidden. And we're just gonna do the exactly the same as we did previously. 135, 135. And hopefully he thinks that he can pull the same stunt. Hmm. No, he does not. He checks, and uh, we'll have to bet. If he hit the club flush, well, so be it. Um, I mean, I'm not falling, in, not even to a race, although, yeah, I mean, a race would really suck, but I uh, have to bet here. I'm gonna take it down. There's a lot of rake if you play 25 and all heads up, so it's not really, a, although I do believe I have an edge versus the guy. I mean, my edge is probably big enough that I can compensate for the rake, but it still means that the rake is going to be a huge killer. 25 and all heads up. Um, seven, ten. He raises. Uh, he raises all uh, pretty much every of every one of his buttons. Uh, the problem is pretty flop, fall to three bad. He's only half his stacked. Uh, I'm just gonna. Play it cautiously. Uh, nine deuce. I'm not even gonna raise. And I'm actually gonna uh, close down the heads up because I mean, this is not the point of the video. And recently there have been some heads up videos up on Grinder School by Characters. This is a hand I will. But now he doesn't min raise. He makes it a little bit bigger, which is interesting. Uh, I'll three bet him though. 
people just join so I'm sitting back in uh, Queen 7 are raised from the button and we got a call from big blinds which I have no reads on he's not fully stacked um, I can check this back and induce some bluffs King is not the best card because now even if he had a king and he now beats me. Um, oh, I'm just gonna call him once. And the jack is makes it even worse. And when he done almost bad spot, we definitely have to fold. Again, table number three loose open, but I mean since everybody is just giving me their blinds, I might as well take them. We have a blind versus blind situation on table number 4 developing. So I think in this video a lot of spots uh, came up. I hope I explained at least some of them decently. Forking suited this guy. I'm just checking. In three bets, like all his three bets are from the blinds, though. By this 12 English guy. This is something I don't understand. By a lot of these people, they have a, like a 3-bet percentage of 10 but they never 3-bet from like in position they always do it from the blinds which is kind of weird to me uh, standard c-bet on table number 2 I will barrel a club oh but we get raised it's funny this doesn't happen all that often I'm just contemplating of 3 betting here, yeah, I'm gonna do it on table number 3. I didn't do it on table number 4 because the guy doesn't fall to 3, uh, on to three bets, Hurley is luck. And he does make the fold again on table number 3. Uh, King 5 suited. Oh, from hijack. It's definitely fine if you fold this, even at ten, even at twenty-five and all. You can play the same game that I've been showing you so often at ten and all. Not the best type of flop. At least there's no flush draw on table number two. So I'm gonna see about it, but I'm not too happy about it because the guy probably fold continuation bets like fifty percent. So it's meh. It's fine if you check fold there with the king five. Uh, 10 queen, we get 3 bet by an unknown, I'm just falling. The ace comes off and this is, yeah, a card that I will... Oh, the thing is, now if he has something like 10 jack, queen jack, he probably thinks that uh, he has to call one more time because now he has the added equity of hitting the cut shot. Uh, I'm just gonna barrel. Maybe it's like a weak pair of tens and something like nine ten. Um, hopefully we can get him off that one. If he had something like jack king, we soon will soon know about it. 
but I'm guessing something like 910 because he folds. If like the card came like let's say the seven uh, of diamonds here on the turn, I would now would probably I uh, no I wouldn't double barrel. I don't know uh, three four. Did this guy just limp in? I can I'm guessing. I'm just not gonna play even three four even if I do a middle pair. I mean, I didn't invest anything in the pot, so... Jack Queen, we can... No, this is not a hand I will 3-bet. I've 3-bet this guy before a couple of times. I'm just gonna fold the Jack Queen. Obviously, it's too weak to be playing out of position also. Uh, versus a guy who is capable. If the guy was like a huge dunk, I would probably play it, but uh, he seems kind of capable. He's constantly reloading. He's playing 2017. He's falling to three bets. Okay, one of the final orbits here. Jacking a race. 9-7 offsuit on table number two will also be a uh, three will also be a race because everybody's so needy. Oh, we actually get three bet on table number four by the same guy who is on table number three. Three bet on table number two. In position with 8 6 suited as a bluff versus basically an unknown, but he's playing 25 25, so he's not completely unknown. I'm not gonna um, bet this deuce deuce 3 flop um, oh. because I don't want to get raised by something like that. If he had pocket jacks, which I believe is a big part of his range, he's just gonna raise me and I don't want to get raised. Uh, so I'm just gonna check and See what he does. If he checks back, uh, I'm definitely betting. But he bets. Two, two, three, four. If I hit a five, I'm good. If I hit a diamond, I'm probably good. Uh, but it's uh, quite a big bet. 325. I have to make some quick decision here. It's quite a big bet. Um, it's too big, I believe, to be calling, so I'm just gonna fold. And on table number three, standard C bet with basically the nuts. Queen 10 offsuit on table number four, I could raise seeing. Uh, yeah, we'll just do it. If you're watching, if, 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 if this is the first time you're watching a video from me, don't think that I'm this, this loose all the time. Uh, but I feel that these people just play really bad and like their hands are pretty face up. So my edge post flop is considerable. Uh, Jack 7. Uh, but this guy is so tight, a3, I can't really 3 bet. Okay, I believe we covered some interesting hands in this video. It's, uh, been, it's been a while since I made a 25 and 0 video, uh, I, but now you've got like some idea of how I go into the game of 25 and L. Compared to 10 and L, I do make a little bit more like tricky plays like double barreling. I'm talked a lot about double barreling cards just because at 25 and L it works a little bit better than uh, compared to 10 and L. We saw a guy stacking off versus me with like pocket jacks on a king high flop when I barreled for three streets. Um, 
amazing. I'm happy that I wasn't bluffing because I do believe that he never has ace king according to my calculations. About according to my range analysis, he never has a really strong king there unless he has something like pocket sixes. He can never call a river shove unless he calls with like king jack, which I believe he folds. But apparently, luckily we hit the river um, and I shoved and he called us with pocket jacks. Very interesting. Okay, so I'm guessing this is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll definitely see you guys in the forums. Bye.